Hello friends and greetings from Iceland again. Today I visited Grindavik as you see and took this flight. As you know, town of Grindavik is open to public and you can drive there even yourself. At your own risk of course because the area is not 100% safe. We still have a lot of earthquake seismic activity around Grindavik, especially at the Cape of Reykjanes in the very end of the peninsula. But it's decreasing overall seismic activity is going down. We will go over the latest update from the Icelandic Met Office. Uh, GPS measurements indicated uplift may have resumed in Svartsengi. The most likely cause is continued magma accumulation beneath Svartsengi area, though part of the uplift may be attributed to the effects of the dike formation on April 1st. This is because when dikes form, they push the crust away on either side. At this stage, it is difficult to determine the rate of magma accumulation, and it may take up to a week to assess how, how it evolves beneath Schwarzenge. The formation data shows that movement continues at GPS stations around the northern part of the dike, including in Vogar and near Keller. Satellite images showing changes between April 1st and 3rd at 4 p.m. confirm this movement. Uh, the same data also reveals measurable fault displacements of a few millimeters on the eastern part of Grindavik. <clears throat> Seismic activity over the northern part of the dike continues to decrease, though small earthquakes are still being recorded in the area. During the past night and this morning about 20 to 30 earthquakes were measured per hour most below magnitude 1. At peak activity over 100 earthquakes were detected per hour. Most earthquakes are spread from Storas Kokfet in the south to just north of Kaler. Their depths are mostly between 4 and 6 kilometers which has remained stable in recent days. The vast majority of magma that left Swartzengi is now within the dike format on April 1st, in some places at depths of around 1.5 km according to modeling data. The formation due to the dike and microseismic activity in its northern part remain unusually high, even though it is decreasing. Due to this, there is still considerable uncertainty about developments in the coming days and magma movements within the dike can be ruled out. As you know, we had a swarm near Trotladinga Shield Volcano close to Lake Kleorovat, but those are triggered by stress changes. At 4.30 on April 3rd, a, a notable earthquake swarm began near Trotladinga Shield Volcano northwest of Kleorovat. The largest earthquake in the sequence occurred around 11 pm and measured 3.9. Since the swarm began, six earthquakes above magnitude 3 have been reported. Many reports were received that the events were felt in populated areas after midnight activity in the area began to decline. The earthquakes near Trotladinga are likely triggered earthquakes due to stress changes following the dike intrusion on April 1st. There remains a possibility of similar sizes triggered events in nearby areas like Trotladinga and Reykjanestau in the coming days and weeks. Enjoy the rest of the footage. I will be in Blue Lagoon tomorrow again and perhaps I will make another flight. In the meantime, have a blessed Sunday. God bless and be well.